あのユーマさんこの子は Yoritori Dori no Sekai HD The Colorful World is a visual novel Neko Nyan considers very dear to them. The company started after a group that was fan translating the game managed to make the jump to official releases. Nowadays, we all know them as the team that brings various Moe games and has a good track record of quality releases and transparency. With that in mind, Yoritori Dori was a highly anticipated game, a title deeply tied to what moved them to join the industry. Considering their usual output, I had already expected that funny character antics would be a significant selling point for this game. Still, I also found a fascinating lore tied to its supernatural elements. Iritori Dori introduces Kanoe Yuma, a young boy who may initially seem like an average high school student. However, that couldn't be further from the truth. Yuma is a liberator, working alongside his master, Suzu, and the dorm owner, Shigeri, to find a way to deal with a severe predicament that has claimed many people's lives in various worlds. And they also handle odd jobs for clients. While each of these characters have supernatural powers, Yuma has a specific backstory. Ever since he was a kid, he has to share his life with a girl named Shinku. Only he can see and touch her, and by the nature of their relationship, he can also use her powers, which we can roughly say can heal individuals. By using Shinku's powers, Yuma can restore any wounds, but it comes with a caveat memory loss. Even when holding back from using them, our protagonist suffers from a tendency to not retain memories. To counteract his fuzzy knowledge of the world around him, he writes down every day's events in a special diary. But Shinku worries that this may not be enough soon. As Yuma goes around trying to live a simple life and one day be able to accomplish his biggest goal as a liberator, he's also looking for love. Shinku occasionally reminds him that finding a significant other is critical to the mission that she wishes to have him handle. After a chance encounter, With a red haired girl named Kana, our protagonist sees himself little by little surrounded by other young beauties. The list of romanceable characters includes Shinku, his childhood friend Miu, the way too eager Kana, Ditsiko Hai Sukasa, and the otaku Q. Each character has a strong personality and personal circumstances that are further explored in their routes. For instance, Miu is a Sundari who often tries to act like she doesn't like Yuma, but it's pretty easy to see how much she cares by her actions. Meanwhile, Sukasa is a little too gullible, so she is pretty much a walking joke. One of the game's most vital points is how well it handles the cast, including the heroines and the side characters. Their intriguing backgrounds, motivations, and actions help flesh out a world that hides a lot of detail. While the story has many Supernatural elements in the background, it usually approaches them lightly. Instead of being overly verbose about explaining everything, the plot is all about the cast, their feelings, and their actions. For that reason, a good part of the common route may feel nebulous, with hidden information that would be easier to appreciate with some glossary system. However, the choice also creates a special atmosphere for the game. While trying to understand the extent of the supernatural elements, we often dive into the contemplative, sad world, grasping. Deeper meanings with our limited, shallow understanding of it. It's an alluring proposition that pays off in the end, but it may hold back readers from grasping onto the story's fundamentals early on. At the same time, though, a significant portion of the story is comedy romps that alleviate those moments. <laughs> More often than not, character interactions are absurd rom com antics. Many characters are prone to trouble or at least messing up with the protagonist, and these situations are fantastic. At least for me, the game managed to land all its attempts at jokes, and I got to enjoy the cast due to those interactions. The game's high visual quality is one aspect that can't be overlooked. While the cute looking style may be hit or miss for some readers more interested in the experience of mature elements, the game has a pretty solid understanding of making basic animations count. It may not seem much to some, but the game feels absurdly fluid, with impressive supernatural. 
natural and regular life backgrounds. Even without lip flapping or winking, the sprite transitions and the camera movement make the world feel alive. The variety of expressions and the excellent voice acting make dialogue feel natural in a way that's hard to pull off. The soundtrack is another pillar with a remarkable impact during the emotional events. Tracks such as An Everlasting Promise, A Brand New World, and A Rain That Knows Not the Sky are good at setting up a more contemplative heart-to-heart -heart mood. Players can also opt to have the HD or the original tracks in the main menu. Iritori Dori no Sekai HD The Colorful World is an impressive game that combines two opposites. On the one hand, we get to explore supernatural elements for the lore and character development, but on the other, we have an endearing rom-com experience. With all the intrigue and the heart in the right place, this is yet another quality release from publisher Neko Neon. Noisy Pixel is giving Iritori Dori no Sekai HD The Colorful World an 8.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers providing independent gaming coverage through news, reviews, previews, and more. Check out our Patreon to help support our continued growth and subscribe to keep up with all our future content. Noisy Pixel.